been a very pressing evening, a big part of it. And I think I can speak for the other groups that are here when I say our goal is not to depress you or upset you or, you know, that's not the goal of tonight. The goal is to, to raise awareness so that when you leave, instead of being upset, bothered, or unable to sleep because you see all these terrible things going on, but hopefully to motivate you to be part of the solution. I know one of the ladies back there said, well, what about the heroin thing? How do we stop it? And the man said, well, you guys could stop it. And the thing is, is being here tonight is, is, you know, and it may sound cliche, but it's the first step towards helping stop it because you're you know, becoming aware. And I encourage you to, after this, you know, talking about it, talking to other people, taking any of our brochures, visiting our website, learning more yourself. And maybe choosing to join one of our organizations and be part of what we're doing. I think all of us could use more help. Um, there, I think nodding my head back there, and you know, be involved and help. And then maybe you can be go with them, and you can speak and talk and tell more people. And, and if we can get out there and tell the students, I mean, because we would all much rather be helping people before the bad thing happens. You know, when we started, my my wife and I, some nine years ago, when we started this whole process of building a home for girls rescued from sex traffickers, the first thing my wife said to me was, well, wouldn't it be better to stop them in the first place than to help them after the fact, which is true. But if we stop trafficking today, which I don't think will happen, but if, even if we stopped it right now, there's 100,000 children in the U.S. right now that are being trafficked. I had no idea, and you probably didn't know that many. 100,000 children. And that comes from the director from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And when he was testifying before Congress under oath, and he said that at least 100,000 children in the U.S. are being trafficked, and we expect that there's more. Maybe as many as 300,000. In the U.S. I had no idea. And the average age of being trafficked in the U.S. is 13. I mean, it's a horrific crime at any age. I mean, there are adult women that are being trafficked, and there are also children being trafficked. And that's the worst version of it. And, um, I mean, I wanted to shout amen to pretty much everything Matt said at the beginning because I felt like, well, the things he was saying, a lot of things that, you know, he said there was a connectedness between the drugs and the trafficking, which is true. And, and like what he said, I, I think him and these gentlemen here who have been through so much themselves, I think to hear their story was such a blessing to me. I mean, how amazing. Statistically, they should still be using or be dead. And instead, they're doing what they're doing. And they're helping other people, and I just think that's amazing. I just think that's wonderful. Um, you know, and the thing is, is you know, every all of this stuff. I mean, the the, the the drug use and people that are suicidal and people that are experimenting, you know, sexually with things and strip clubs, and then they end up being trafficked and all these other crazy things. It's just like they're not bad people, you know. And in a lot of cases, they're just kids, and a lot of times they're making foolish decisions, and a lot of times they make those foolish decisions based upon evil, depraved. Adults who are coercing and tricking them. You know, uh, the people that do these things, that traffic little girls, like I tell people they're depraved but they're not stupid, they have a system. All right? This is the second best money maker behind, uh, for organized crime, the second best money maker right behind drugs is sex trafficking. And I don't think anybody believe, or anyone would argue with the fact that it's probably going to become number one eventually. Because sex trafficking of, of, of people, of children, I mean, they can sex drive them into prostitution. Then they can video while they're being prostituted, while they're people physically and sexually abusing. They can video that and then sell that video. Oh. So for them, that's just I'm making money twice. And on top of that, unlike you know, I mean, they sell a drug, but now they got to get a new drug to sell that. With the girl, they sell her and they can sell her the next time. They don't have to go get more. They've got her right there. It's just a it's a renewable resource for them. That's the depraved way of thinking that they have. Um, Anyway, so I want to talk a little bit more about trafficking specifically. Um, I can throw out a lot of statistics. I'm a math teacher by trade. I don't know if anybody like math. <laughs> anyway, so I've been teaching math for 30 years. I taught a little bit. Uh, I taught at Clay High School. I taught a little bit at Summer School at Perrysburg. I taught at Woodmore. I taught at Owens Community College. I'm, at I'm in Emmanuel Christian High School now. I taught at the University of Toledo for about 25 years. I graduated from there and taught there. So I'm teaching the high school and today and teach there. So I've been teaching for a really long time and I love teaching. And that's one thing I want to make clear today too is I don't think any one of us that spoke, maybe you can tell, none of us are professional speakers. We're not entrepreneurs or anything like that. We're just people just like you. I'm a math teacher, but I'm also the founder and the director of Ohio's first licensed recovery home for adolescent survivors of sex trafficking. 
Now, the interesting thing is, and let's not let it out of this room, but I'm not qualified to be that. I'm a math teacher. But I'm, I also do this other thing, and I'm very glad to be able to do it. But whenever I speak, I try to talk about two things. One is trafficking, so people realize it's such a terrible problem. But then, two, I also like to talk about the bright side, the, the fact that we had the Donor Project home. The first one was the Kind of Ohio. So right here in Wood County, in the last four years, we've helped 14 young girls um, restart their life and um, be able to return home to their families and to be rescued from this awful crime. And that's what we've done in our home. And um, but let me talk about, let me get the, the dark part out of the way. Let me talk about sex trafficking. I have a little video clip. And uh, Grace, the amazing tech woman over here, is going to make that work for us, I think. And it's a young lady from Toledo that was rescued from traffickers. And so I'm going to let her tell you what sex trafficking is. Made the call. 
fall, I have an opportunity to actually have life. You know, I have this baby, this is the second one now, second one on the way, I have a little girl, this is a little boy, I'm married, you know, to a wonderful guy, and I actually have life, I actually can come back from this, you know, I have a chance to, I have a chance to live, you know, to, to experience things that without what he did for me, you know, a simple phone call, without that, you know, it would have been total opposite, but here I am, I'm sitting here with my mom, you know, I mean, and that all could have been taken away, but because of, you know, that trucker, I have, you know, a future. Oh, that trucker, <laughs> the one that made it phone call, I, I think about him all the time, I have never met him, I don't know who he is, but boy, I owe him a lot. <laughs> If it wasn't for him calling the police and saying that she just doesn't look right there, I have no idea what what would have happened. Just, I'm so proud. What am I thinking? Oh, to him. Today I'm trying to get to him. And if, he's, if he ever sees this, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Here's what we need you to do. So that's the kind of girls that we help now. And you know, this, one of the sad things to me, I mean, there's a lot of things in the video, and there's a lot of things I'd like to say, and I won't have time. So I encourage you, you know, go to our website, learn about trafficking. If you, you know, don't just be upset, be part of the solution. You can be part of the solution. Look, I'm a math teacher. And if I can do what I'm doing, certainly you can do a part of it. But, you know, even in the help that that young girl was getting, you know, there's still that mis- I mean, the truck driver said in his 911 call, he said, there's a couple young girls out here trying to do business. These are not little girls trying to do business. These are little girls who a crime is being perpetrated against them. They're being physically and sexually abused. Like the, like the attorney general from Texas said, it's not like it's, you know, some woman at 21 years of age is working in an army saying, well, I'm tired of working in an army, so I'm going to go out there. You know, that multiple men have sex with me every night and just make big money for them. It's not, that's not it at all. Uh, you know, the average age of being trafficked is 13, and the research is showing, and I don't need research, but a lot of people do, the research is showing the vast majority of women that are in prostitution and pornography and, and strip clubs and all that, when they're asked if you could get out, they say, they say yes. That's like 95, 96% of them. A huge percent of them would get out if they could. So why are they in there? Well, because, like the one girl told me, um, she was using drugs, and she couldn't afford it. You see, that's what the drug dealers do. They get you, they give it to you free, and then they, they get you hooked on it. And now I can't afford them. So he said, well, you come down to the strip club. I got a buddy who runs a strip club. You strip there, you make all the money you need to get your drug. And of course, the power of addiction, then she says yes. She said, I've talked to these girls, younger girls and the adult women, you know, and they're disgusted. They don't, they're not hot, sexy little girls. That's, that's the lie that men tell themselves, that that's what these girls are in strip club and pornography. It's not their mother and their sister. These are different women who want to do this. Well, no 14-year-old girl wants to strip in front of men my age. They're disgusted by that. And they see, they see men that in other areas of their life are completely reputable people. They're teachers and they're attorneys and they're law enforcement people. That's, you know, viewing pornography. And, you know, I used to think that naively so that the people that did this abuse um, were, you know, people that were, you know, just completely mentally deranged or something going on that they just couldn't even think straight. There was things, you know, just, but that's not the case at all. You know, the average person, they call them Johns, that's way too nice of a name. That's the, you know, the Johns. All right, well, these are sexual predators. They're sexual deviants. If they're paying to have sex with children, they're not Johns. All right? And so they have this thing, and here's another euphemism, it's called sex tourism. That's what it's called. And what that is, is you've got this man who, this is a typical thing, this isn't typical of the iceberg kind of thing. Uh, the, the, a man who's he's a businessman and he's gonna and he travels internationally. So he's headed for Germany for a business trip, the company's gonna pay for it. Uh, he might have a family, have kids. Alright, but before he goes on his trip, all expense paid trip by his company, because it's a business trip. He's online finding where he can find the youngest girls, the, the cheapest girls, the, the girls with the least amount of law enforcement around them. And he makes those plans before he goes. Kisses his family goodbye, gets on a plane, goes over, does his job over there in Germany or wherever. And during the day, but then at night or on the weekends, he's having sex, and then he comes back home. 
everything else about his life, you know, I mean, he's a, he's a businessman. He goes to business meetings. He goes to Rotary Club meetings. You know, he, he goes to church. He goes to, you know, he goes to the ball game, whatever. And we wouldn't have no idea. But that's, that's some of the people that are doing that. You know, it's, it's, it's frightening. Well, there's so many statistics to say and so many things I'd like to say. Like I said, visit our website. And it's not just about visit our website and donate to us. If you want to donate to us, that's great. I mean, we need money to help the girls to provide counseling and so forth. But that's not the point. If you want to learn about trafficking, there's the state, national, international reports on trafficking. Learn about that. There's videos and there's books and there's articles. So you can become, because the way to become part of the solution, I found, is to become aware. And I became aware because my son-in-law gave me a book. And that's what started me on this path. Now, I'm on a much different path than what I ever thought I was going to be on. But so be it. And so, you know, be careful of what you read. <laughs> um, but let me let me leave you to this, and then if we have time, which it's up to Grace, if we have time, I'll be trying to answer the question. But you know, and if I don't have time, just send me an email. It's just Jeff with the Dollar Project. I'll get back to you within 24 hours. I always because if people are are willing to s s take a moment to write me an email, I will get back to you. If you're going to be interested in any way to know anything about what we're doing, I will get back to you personally and make sure that we get you connected to whatever. But here's the thing that I want to emphasize before I leave today. Is that besides all this other stuff, is for you to understand something that I didn't understand either. I mean, I thought this was a problem in India and Thailand, which it is. But I found out that it happens in the U.S. And then I found out it happens in Ohio. And I found out it happens in Toledo. And my wife and I, and uh, she's not here tonight. Usually she's with me. It's making more legitimate, but she's not here tonight. But uh, we live in Bowling Green. You know, I don't know if any of you live in Toledo, maybe Perrysburg, or whatever. But here's the thing. I used to think after I learned that it doesn't just happen overseas, I thought, well, it's. It's Las Vegas and it's Miami and it's Detroit and you know maybe Toledo, but you know, and that's not the case. All right, first of all, Toledo was ranked fourth in the country for trafficking. Fourth in the country by the Ohio Trafficking Commission in cooperation with the FBI. And right behind Vegas, Miami, and Portland, Oregon. And in that same study, Toledo was ranked first per capita because we're so small compared to them. And it was, you know, there's lots of issues with why that is. But here's the statistic I want you to, and the thing I want you to understand is. The first three girls that we helped in our home were rescued out of Perrysburg Township. They, they were from New York. They got trapped in the Perrysburg Township. Or it's always the first three girls. And we've helped girls from Toledo. We've helped girls from other places. But you see, from Perrysburg Township, and we, I, I had a former student of mine who lived in Maumee. It was trapped out of Maumee. It's frightening. Uh, one of our counselors, who was trafficked herself, now she's in her 40s, she was trafficked. Beginning at the age of eight, her uncle was selling pictures of her. By the time she was 12, she was prostituted. And she lived that life until she was 31. And she, of all the people I know in my life, has more right to say than anybody, I don't believe in God, or if God exists, he doesn't love me. Because, you know, from eight to 31, she lived that life. And, but she doesn't say that. Whenever she speaks, I usually cry. And she comes over and says, if you don't have to cry anymore, it's over. But then she says, you know, she goes, God did not do this to me. Evil men did this to me. God helped rescue me and helped me to heal and recover. That's amazing. She goes, God is my father, and he loves me, and he's helping me heal. And so she counseled with our girls. And I remember she came to our home, and she sat down at the table across from me, and she said, why wasn't there a daughter project home for me? And she didn't mean that in a meaningly way, like, where were we? But rather, why wasn't there one? Why wasn't there a place for her to get help? And what she told me was, she said, Jeff, my trafficker, amongst other places, but my trafficker trafficked traffic me into Pepperville. How many people have ever heard of Pemberville? Right? Little tiny world town, farming community, no stoplights, one of the other few. Half my wife's family is from there. That's unbelievable. But sadly, there are depraved men all around the world, in every little corner of the world, that are willing to pay to have sex with, with children. And so her trafficker brought her out to Pemberville. And now with the internet, 95% of what on the internet is terrible. And at pretty much every problem that we've talked about tonight, the internet feeds that problem. Everything from being able to, to introduce people to drugs, to sell the drugs, to, to bullying children and get them connected to people and the, and, then, and, and trafficking, all of this stuff. You know, a, but about 5% of what's on the internet is worth something. I mean, you can take virtual field trips with, with students to Egypt and see the pyramids. How wonderful. But there's so much other garbage out there. And that's part of what we need to do is raise awareness. I mean, we have a, we have a ta Northwest Ohio Task Force on Internet Crimes Against Children. I mean, they, they have to like set aside specifically for Internet Crimes Against Children. I mean, we've got to be telling our kids that. I mean, my, our kids are adult kids now, and through our daughter, we have three granddaughters. I have pictures. But, um, you know, we need to be protecting our kids. They don't even realize what they're getting into. They don't know who they're talking to on the other end. Of course, as parents, we're stupid. 
grandparents were stupid. So, you know, let, let, let others of us come and tell them that. Let, let, help us get out there. Help us get, I mean, that's what we want to do. We want to talk to every school so we, can, so we can warn the kids, warn the staff, warn the parents. You know, I sent a letter to the nine superintendents of the largest school districts in Northwest Ohio, and I got no response. You know, and I told I gave them a copy of the PowerPoint. I said I would give them a copy of the PowerPoint. I said, we're not coming to your school to, to raise money. We're not going to get money from students, you know. They don't have enough money for lunch, let alone support the daughter. We're not coming for that. We're coming so that they'll be aware. So that the kids next to each other will start seeing the signs so the parents will protect their kids from the Internet. You know, I went, so we have been invited to a few, but you see, when I write that letter, it's just like, I don't know who this guy is. You know, never mind that he's the director of a group home. Never mind that. We, we, the Dollar Project, we won a national award, Jacqueline Kennedy and Assis Award for Community Service. I mean, we went to D.C. for it. You know, but that doesn't seem to carry any weight either. I don't know. What do you got to do to convince people that you're legitimate? You know, but we just want to get into the school. But if you go to your school and say, you know what? We heard about heroin. We heard about suicide. We heard about sex trafficking. And our kids and our families should know about it. And talking about it isn't going to make them do drugs, kill themselves, or get into trafficking. It's going to help them stay out of it. But if you tell them, it's your school, you're paying the taxes, and in Perrysburg, you're paying a lot of taxes, tell them, say, I want, bring these people in, and they might listen to you, they may not listen to me. If they get a generic letter for me, it just goes in the trash. So be part of the solution, and you can be. Um, there's a lot more I'd like to say, but not a time or anything. Is there any questions, or do we need to leave? Yes, ma'am. I, I teach beauty school, so for people that don't know it, Every nail tech, esthetician, and cosmetologist has to participate in one hour of human trafficking every year. Right, absolutely. And Ohio is, is leading the way in those sorts of things. Pretty much anybody that gets a license, architecture, truck drivers, they're all making them all now learn about trafficking. Right. So that's the point of rescue. Right, it's the point of rescue. And Ohio also has the Cut It Out program. And every salon out there is deemed a safe haven for um, domestic violence. Oh. And one of the Another biggest things man. that they told us to look for, when you have their hair up, when they have a tattoo that says daddy's girl on it, you know that they're trafficking. Yeah, yeah, it's awful. I mean, it reminds me, you know, it reminds me of a lot of things. Sure. And the tattoo. I mean, these guys, it's ownership. I mean, they'll change, they'll even change their name. Sometimes the girls that get rescued, they don't even know who they are because they've been so beaten down. You had a question with that. Yeah, in this area, I know you mentioned truck stops, but I've heard like Fallen Timbers is really a bad area for human trafficking. Are there certain areas that are more so than others, or? Well, the thing is, we don't want people living in fear, all right? I mean, it does have, did anybody see the movie Taken? Yeah. They at least have Taken 2 and Taken 3 on the TV show Taken. All right, well, you see that, right? And it is realistic. I mean, you know, sometimes girls actually, they literally get taken, you know, from an apartment or off the street or something like that. But that's very rare. It's not that it doesn't happen, but they, see, they're too smart for that. They know that there's cell phones everywhere. They're not going to pull up on a black man with a black mask and a gun, jump out, grab a girl, because everyone's going to see them. So that sort of thing, uh, although, I mean, it does happen. The Hollywood part of the movie was is that Liam Neeson was an ex CIA agent, and he killed everyone, never got killed himself and rescued his daughter. But you know, so that's the Hollywood part. But, so it does happen like that. So here's the thing, you know, if we just do some common sense things, you know, don't drop your child off at the mall. All right, and just you know, go in with them. Don't walk at the movie, or don't say, "I'll wait. I'll be here." You know, two hours from now, come out to the parking lot. So we just have to be careful. You know, don't, you can't. Unfortunately, don't let your you know, you just can't do it. Don't let your child walk a block over to a friend's house. Just don't do that anymore. It's just take them. You know, you got you got to be with them. You just never know. I mean, because it could it could happen any place. Now they, like I said, though they have a system. They're much more likely to grab. I mean, the typical girl comes from a, a, a broken or so-called dysfunctional home where there's drug use going on in the home, one or both parents are addicted. Usually there's physical or sexual abuse going on in the home. So they zero on these kids. And what they'll do, like the one girl that we, that we had, she goes, she told me, she said, Jeff, I'm not like you. You know, when I got up in the morning, if I went to school or didn't, it wouldn't matter. Her dad was gone, her mom was a functional alcoholic, the stepdad, well, he wasn't even married, he was just kind of hanging out, was beating the mom, and she was afraid it was going to leak over to her. And she was, when I got done with school, if I, didn't, if I went home to school, from home school or didn't, it didn't make any difference. So she was hanging, 13 years old, Hanging out at the playground after school, and one and this older guy comes up to her, like 27 years of age, comes up to her, all right, not with the ski mask, cute guy, you know, comes up to her. Now we teach our kids stranger danger, I think, all right, but she got none of that, and they take advantage of that, and so she's not thinking, oh my gosh, this is a freak. She's thinking that's a really cute guy, and he thinks I'm cute. She's not thinking like, well, he's twice my age, and she gobbles up that affection because she's getting no affection at home, and you know, you know, we started with prayer. We, we talked to, I mean, you know. 
God has made us relational beings. And, you know, I mean, what's the greatest commandment, according to what Jesus Christ said, was is to love God and then to love others. And we're made that way. By nature, we, we want to have relationships. And if they don't have, it's called association disorder and suicidal ideation and all these things these girls suffer from, they, if they're not connected with somebody, they're reaching out, they want to connect with somebody. So she's just gobbling up the attention. And he patiently goes, she goes home, he comes back the next day to the same playground because he knows she'll be there. And then over the period of several weeks, he'll learn to trust, and then he'll say something like, well, you know, I have a friend who's a photographer, you're really pretty. She's thinking, I can make a little bit of money. Some of the nicer things the other kids have, not thinking this is really dangerous, and off she goes, and then you never see her again. That's much more typical. So the thing is, is uh, I would say, you know, if, with my experience, and you know, we have an FBI trafficking task force in Toledo, and talking with agents from there, which is really weird. Like when I'm talking to FBI agents, I feel like I'm like an NCIS or something like a movie. But anyway, I'm talking with him, and you know, he has never said to me, you know what, keep your kids away from here to here. You know, so it's really not a location. It's really more. The children and what's their their at risk behaviors and, and because of the families they come from, they're much more likely. But see, so just common sense things, just to be careful. With, you know, I would never say you know don't go to Lavis Commons or fall in timbers or go out to the Franklin Park Mall. But I, what I would say is you you go as a group and keep your children safe, whatever age they are, and go with them because you're not going to jump in the middle of a column and grab one girl out of your group. I mean, that's just isn't going to happen. Well, I mean, I suppose it could, but it's just that's just not heard. Of. I've never heard of such a case. They those zero in on the kid that got dropped off the mall, but the parents didn't know the movie was over now, so she's hanging out for an extra 45 minutes somewhere, maybe just outside the front door, you know, and some cute, handsome guy comes up, and she's 15, and she doesn't have a sense to stay away from it, and then that's where it uh, Any other questions we have? I don't have any questions. Yes? Why is it such a big problem? Well, there's lots of reasons, and it's a very good question. One is what we mentioned earlier, the whole, I mean, you traffic drugs, you can traffic people. Okay. 75 is the longest north-south road in the country. The turnpike connected to the other turnpikes is the longest east-west road. And so they can grab a girl, and they can have her into, in Miami overnight, or in Chicago in less than that. And so that's what they do, because they want to get these girls disconnected from anybody that might possibly help them. So that's, that's part of it, but there's, there's far much more than that. The reason that Toledo's on the map right now Ten years ago, the FBI started what it calls the Innocence Laws Campaign, which is a sadly good name for this. They started recognizing that trafficking takes place in the U.S. And so they started having these nationwide stings. Every year, they would pick a weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and do a nationwide sting. The first year they did it, they, they picked cities all over the country. Right? And the first year they did it, Toledo was not one of the cities, but Harrisburg, Pennsylvania was. So they did this sting operation that weekend. Forty of the girls they arrested from Harrisburg were from Toledo. And that was like... Why is that? And so then they that shone a spotlight on Toledo. They put an FBI trafficking task force in Toledo. There's only about one in every state that want to know how's in Toledo. So now because they're here, they're looking for it. So that makes our statistics, you know, even go up unnaturally high. Basically, any city of any size, even Pembroke, but any city of any size, like he said, if you've got strip clubs in your town, if you've got uh, adult prostitution, you've got child prostitution, and so it's just it's just a terrible crime. You know, yeah, go ahead. It, is there a statistic out there that says what, which ones are the ones that are grabbed? You know, like the one, you know, the girls that are just grabbed that don't come from a bad home and a, uh -huh. and a, a scenario where she's at the playground. The one, the is one there a statistic of just your grab, the little girl walking? Yeah, yeah. I mean, other a, than, I mean, the typical story that I described before, but the, the sure. girl that gets grabbed I'm just curious. is the girl that's by herself, far enough away from anybody is, else. Is there know, a statistic? Could, I mean, it could be at the mall, but she's not in with everybody else. She's, like I said, maybe she's walking out in the parking lot because her mom said she was going to park right here and she's walking out that way. It'd be the one by herself. That, Is there a statistic? I'm just curious. I'm a numbers No, person. I've oh, never seen I any just specific oh, okay. statistic. But I've heard and, and I know Right, and I have, yes. Stories. Yes. We have two. I can talk Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say, for you guys to know that teachers do, we watch, we, we're mandated, we have to watch all these videos on all these topics outside of school time. Um, but I think writing your legislators, why the principals maybe don't have these people come in is because everything's such an emphasis on testing. And our day is so fast with test, 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 test everything that our legislators are not going to listen to the teachers, but they're going to listen to you. So if you want this stuff into your schools, I think you need to contact your legislators and tell them that this is important to you and that we need to change our school day and our focus on more 
mental health, taking care of our kids versus all this testing. Um, She's right. I'm a teacher too. This was going on. Sketch is out of control and there's no time. It's fast and it's all around testing. So.